This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Since you're undeniably throwing out your personal and financial information here, there, and everywhere, NordVPN protects your personal data with its encrypted virtual private networks, preventing data breaches, blocking malware and trackers, and masking your computer's IP address, which is especially vital if you have to frequently utilize public Wi-Fi, so it is massively helpful that your account can be used to up to six devices, including your mobiles. All while not at all being a drag on your internet user experience. It's easy to use, retains your internet speed, and if you want to access content that is restricted in your country, NordVPN has over 5,000 servers in 59 countries. Did you know that Japan's Netflix actually updates weekly? Or that Disney Plus actually does have Love, Victor? Yeah, earlier this year, Disney Plus launched this whole other section called Star, which is essentially their adult section available to every English country that isn't the US. Sure, sure, that's, that's fair. And currently, if you sign up via nordvpn.com slash sellspecs, you'll get a huge discount on a two-year plan plus four months free. And if you just want to try it out with no commitment, it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash sellspecs to take back control of your internet. So, what does the rest of 2021 look like? Who are those guys? It's me, Uncle Griffin. You don't recognize me? I've literally never seen you before. Yay! I'm so glad Gendy is getting funding for projects that I actually care about. Okay, I'll be nice. I said in the list that I did come around to the third movie. Drac still isn't in my favorite animated dad's list by a lot, but I can get on board with the animated goofiness as long as it doesn't pull a movie too. And turning the monsters into humans? That's an amusing enough concept that at least fulfilled this highlight reel to fill a movie trailer length. But there is also a potential emotional hook here. Drac and Mavis are now both married to humans who are going to age a lot faster than them, so the ending of this might be unexpected and might even lead to the end of the franchise as a whole, we can only hope. Though it seems, at least by this trailer, that Mavis is not going to be part of this trip. I wish I could say I was surprised if they found a way to make Mavis not an active character again. Hope you enjoyed that very brief bout in movie 3, girl. But it's more likely that she and her new stepmom are likely doing a side mission. <laughs> Another Mamoru Hosoda film, and we're going back to one of his social media worlds like in Summer Wars, but it's not Summer Wars, but it's actually a Beauty and the Beast story with an emphasis on exploring Belle specifically? Why on earth have virtual film festivals suddenly stopped becoming a thing? That was one of the few upsides of the shutdown. Now I actually have to travel to New York if I want to see it in September? But apparently it will be released widely sometime this year, and obviously I'm stoked. And what's its Japanese title? The Princess of Dragons and Freckles. Sorry, the dragon and the freckled princess. That makes more sense. Grammar is important, kids. They're both growing up so fast, they wouldn't be caught dead with their parents. Huh, how did I not see when this trailer went up? I can only assume it's because absolutely nobody talked about it because nobody cared. Huh, more views than hotel. That's surprising. But that they're both opening on the same weekend, though one in streaming and the other in theaters, at least, what I've heard so far. So it's not like we're gonna see any solid competitive numbers. I know that I was really hard on the Adams family, but the actual family itself was mostly fine, and this time that seems to be way more of the focus. But another charm point of the concept is also the house, which doesn't look like there's gonna be very much of the house in this, so still could go either way. They're trying way too hard to make these Adams Family animated movies be really bright. I also noticed that there didn't seem to be much of a way of a plot direction expressed in this trailer, just a collection of gags. And while the gags themselves were a little bit plain, I am desperately holding on to the futile hope that this really will just be a series of classic Adams Family jokes without the plot, because those are usually the most underwhelming parts of those movies. Though it still opens up the question on whether non-Adams Family humans will look any better than they did in the previous movie. I certainly hope that things will be better, but considering the pun posters and the really leaning into the cousin thing Snoop comparison, there's probably way more surfing the web jokes on the horizon. Your son is safe now, ma'am. This isn't my kid! You're welcome! Oh boy, prepare to strap in for the rabbit hole of friendship and magic is so much better than this. 
Because of course it's fair to judge a nine season plus series people devoted an entire decade of their lives to to one movie. But one of the people that probably needs to hear that the most is me. Because I'm sorry, the CGI just feels wrong. <laughs> it just makes it feel even more like an overt toy advertisement than it already was. One of the underrated reasons why Friendship is Magic became such a thing was because the art style was so simple that it could be easily imitated, copied, and personalized into unique pony sonas. Even for people with limited artistic talent. I mean, I was able to make one. And you just can't do that with these CGI models. Unless the youngins these days have gotten super great at 3D modeling, which is that the new thing? I wouldn't know. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if not only that was deliberate, but if an executive note for this series was to deliberately make it more juvenile in order to deter older audiences so they wouldn't have to deal with those damn bronies again. But then again, I am still interested, especially since this apparently takes place in the same universe. I am very curious to know how the finale of the last series ended by solving an interspecies crisis. And now the new series is starting with an interspecies crisis. Okay, who effed up? And yes, I am being super snarky and pessimistic, but I do think that this trailer has some good comedic timing and will generally be fine. And the CG designs themselves sure do continue to not look remotely like horses. I don't know what this movie's story will be, and I don't care. I am already in love with its setting of this beautiful house, and wondering if any of these delightful colorful characters are going to get any actual focus in the movie aside from our lead. And by the gods, please do not overuse the word special. You've already maxed out your quota with this trailer. But still, yes, I am very excited. The Bebot, there's, there's something wrong with it. It's not meant to do that. I'm not meant to do that. I can feel the Mitchells comparison sneaking up on this film. Certainly isn't the first time we've gotten the glitches gives robots personalities. Uh, I miss XR, but I know that it's going to be going its own direction and I'll be interested to see that. I am here for unnecessary robot violence, both as a perpetrator and a recipient. Your songs will carry you. Just sing. What I'm looking <sighs> really? Again? You just put the whole movie in the trailer again. Because why not? It's worked for all of your other movies. And they made like a billion dollars, so why change anything now? Yes, like the other movie, I know the entire point is going to be the final performances, which I'm sure will make very high view counts on YouTube. And yes, as a trailer, it actually looks pretty good, as it usually does, because the trailers have usually had all of the best parts and usually had better pacing than the actual movie. Believe me, guys, I'm tired as well of feeling like I have constantly have to justify why Illumination annoys me every single time, partly because I know that it shouldn't bother me so much on this level. But of course, I'm going to give it a chance. The first thing is arguably one of the better things that Illumination has done, and I always hope to be wrong. I'm sure the final performances will be great, but still, that pop music montage and just the trailer was already making me wince. Real! Where what gives? <laughs> you know what? This is fine. Obviously it won't have the same comedy or charm as it does in animation, but it's a novelty and since Loud House is already pretty slice of life with limited fantasy elements that won't be completely visually jarring, I will be interested to see just how much more lackluster the live experience will be. We also had the Loud House musical movie release on Netflix recently and it is an hour plus long episode of Loud House as I kind of expected it would. It feels very Nickelodeon TV movie. It's okay, it has nice songs, but there is way too much emphasis put on this one note villain that I am just not into. And David Tennant just reminds me of how much I miss DuckTales. But speaking of live action, we finally got photos of that Cowboy Bebop movie that apparently is still happening. 
And I am sure that many fans of Faye Valentine are supremely disappointed that we aren't going to be getting constant views of her butt crack. Somehow, we will survive. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that the costumes are not picture-perfect cosplay replications, that you have to care a little bit about maneuverability, but I know, seeing how the clothes are different eludes you of like, what else is different? Well, probably a lot of things, guys. It's a Netflix anime adaptation. I don't think any of us went into this thinking that this was going to be amazing. Though John Woo is pulling it off a lot better than I thought. But of course, we're not going to get a real grip of what it's like until we see a trailer. And even though this isn't until next year, we also got Pixar's next original project, Turning Red. And aside from, yes, of course, I'm always happy for another Pixar original and another focus on coming-of-age anxiety. Has Pixar ever used such a blatant pop song in one of their trailers before? That was just jarring. But of course, there's plenty of other things coming out this year that aren't feature-length. Like, we'll be getting the second season of Kid Cosmic on Netflix. The first season was really fun, and I loved the comic book style and flair, but it also just reminded me of how much I miss Wander Over Yonder. We also have Maya and the Three from the creators of Book of Life, and it looks beautiful, but it is another rebellious princess story of someone who wants to do boy things and is laughed at for a girl who wants to do boy things. And I know that there are going to be people that say that we're past this, but then you remember that the internet still exists, and some people still need to hear this. We'll also have Distant Lands Wizard City and the second season of the Animaniacs reboot. In October on Disney, we'll have The Ghost of Molly McGee, the third season of Amphibia. Oh my god, were you kidding me with season two? And so rare that we've gotten the reverse isekai treatment. Actually, that was way more common back in the female isekai age. Same goes for Owl House, which, you know, Owl House has been just one of the best things to happen this year. Amity Blight, do you want to go out with me? Yes! <laughs> And of course I know that none of you will, but on the minuscule chance anyone is finally ready to just do one month of Apple Plus just to see Wolfwalkers, I know the service sucks, but it's only five bucks. And once you're there, you might as well watch both seasons of Central Park, which are amazing. And also, hey, Ted Lasso is also pretty good on there. Oh, and hell of a boss? Was this a season finale or something? Because you just pulled it all out. And since we're already in the area of me briefly commenting on things I've seen that I'm not gonna make full videos of, Vivo was really good. It was a very mainstream animated film, but with a bunch of great songs that sound like they're from In the Heights but aren't, and an emotional focus on the tragedy of loss. And those 2D animation sequences were beautiful. So I'd still vaguely recommend it. And then we got Evangelion, the actual finale. I'm sure that some shippers are going to be very disappointed in the conclusion, but I am very happy with this. I don't care how long it took to get made, it was well worth it, and Anno deserves to take the time to take care of himself and do it right. Centaur Land is a bit of a weird show. Conceptually, I kind of love it. Take a character from a much more gritty, anime, avatar-esque war story, and then somehow they end up basically in Toon World, where everything is brighter, rounder, magicaler, singier, and of course, sentient. And just seeing how the character adjusts to that. It is a major clash of art, aesthetics, and genre. It's still not one of my favorites of the entire year, but it is a good time. It took me a while to warm up to Tuca and Birdie, but I really loved season two. I'm so happy that Adult Swim picked this back up. We got Love, Death, and Robots Season 2, which had half as many entries as last time, and a lot less nudity than last time. There was also a lot more photorealistic CGI, which was a little disappointing, but I did still like most of the entries. Ice was made by the same animators that did last season's best short, Zima Blue, and All Through the House gave us an early dose of holiday horror. So that's always fun. And just in case anybody asks, I have not seen The Bad Batch, and I'm not going to. But I will check out Star Wars Visions because I believe that those are self-contained. And I honestly felt pretty marveled out after Loki, but What If is showing a lot of promise. I'm usually a bit iffy on cel-shaded CGI, but this style really works for this, both at looking like a living comic book 
and the characters still look realistic enough to feel connected to the MCU proper. The first two episodes were really good, the Captain Carter and the T'Challa Star-Lord, but the third one involving someone assassinating the Avengers has been nigh universally praised as the best one so far, and I am looking forward to more in the future. Now that's not all I've seen this year, I will definitely talk about Owl House more in the future. So tell me Animaniacs, what have you enjoyed this year so far, and anything else coming up this year that I forgot? Probably. 